Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I've got the all new Nike React X Infinity Run 4. And these things are all over the place. <laughs> Let's get into them. Now the Infinity Run 4 has gotten a lot of press leading up to its launch, mainly for its use of React X, which we'll get to in the midsole teardown. However, for me, the upper is what really caught my eye, really slick and streamlined. However, there are some pitfalls to them you obviously have to know about. Now, number one with the uppers, when I first took them out of the box, the tongue looked like it was so far distal in the shoe, like it wouldn't come up over the ankle collar, but specifically the material and the gusset of the tongue and just the main body of the tongue is so elastic, you can just pull it all the way back. Now, the one thing I did notice is the tongue is incredibly thin on these, as well as the lace line is a little bit tight. And you know, the runner's knot in these is, is pretty narrow. So I did notice when I was lacing them down, I was getting a little bit of annoyance on the dorsum of my foot. Now I have a very high arched foot and there are gonna be different profiles for that once we get into the fit section. So that might not be an issue for you. So make sure you stick around for that. But that is one thing I noticed with how razor thin these uppers were that, that the laces were just a little bit, you know, just digging into me. Now around the ankle collar, it's not a super Super bunted and padded ankle collar, so you better be using the runner's knot. Now the rest of the upper is pretty interesting. It is a super tight knitting of the uppers, which you kind of need for them being that elastic, but it, it's very dense except for where you have like the strategic breathing channels in there. Now if you look at the breathability test on these, they heated up 116.6 degrees, cooled down another 62.1 degrees. And I mean, that's not a terrible breathability profile. However, it's not as elite as some of Nike's other running shoes. However, I did notice when I had the heat gun in there, air was coming out of every single pore in this shoe. So there wasn't just one spot where air was escaping. And on the upper durability test, 10 second tie grit sandpaper, the bird does start to get through the outer layer of that elastic, but it does not get all the way through. And because these are road running shoes, I really wouldn't think you'd have a huge problem in terms of durability to abrasion or anything like that. However, for how elastic they are, they are pretty darn good. And then I will just make mention of one thing here in the heel counter. This does have a nice little strap that goes around, which does look like window dressing. However, because there is also an internal heel counter, which is pretty flexible, this does just kind of augment that a little bit to give these just a little bit more stability in the rear foot. Now getting into the midsole teardown, this is where the shoe really starts to become interesting. However, before I show you the inside of it, I do want to make note of the outside of the midsole. Now on the lateral side, you have this gigantic concavity all the way from the forefoot into the rear foot. And then on the medial side, you actually have a little bit of a convexity on the medial side going from the rear foot kind of into the arch area, right? Because on the lateral side, you have it to where it's got a little bit of an easier compression on the medial side. It's got a little bit more foam to make it a little bit stronger. And that's because when we come down, especially in a rear foot, or in this case, a midfoot strike, you need a lot of compression on the lateral side to give you a little bit more forgiveness. Like I said, we'll talk about that in the runnability section, but they're not all just for window dressing. Now, if you look at the midsole teardown in full, um, you'll notice that it is just a giant bed of React X foam. Now, what Nike claims about React X is that it has a 43% lower carbon footprint, but it has 13% higher energy return. But if you look at kind of the, the technical specs of it, it is an injection molded React foam, not a compression molded foam, which you know usually with injection molds, you get a little less performance, but it, it's less wasteful. But what they say with React is they've been able to kind of blend the two. Now React X has a lot of different materials in it. Nike has never really said exactly what's in it. However, usually people agree that it's some form form of EVA, TPE, and then some form of rubberized particles in there is maybe some olefin copolymers, which are those really bouncy things you find in diaper elastic as well as curry flow line type shoes. Now what I noticed about React X versus React Foam is that it feels much more rubbery. It just, it really wants to bounce back. It feels like a memory foam pillow. If a memory foam pillow could also be inflated like a basketball, that's what this feels like. It's very cushy underfoot, very comfortable for walking and just kind of hanging around. Uh, once you get into the running aspect of it, a little bit different, but it, just in terms of feeling it, it is, it's very nice. Now, the one thing I noticed about these is number one, no shank, not bottom loaded or top loaded. And number two, uh, the heel is actually lower than the arch. There's actually a molded arch into these. So the heel to toe drops and the arch to toe drops are, are kind of all over the place. And that's why I threw in all those numbers just to show you kind of where the shoe is going in terms of what kind of striker you are. You might have kind of a different experience than some other people will with these. And if you look at that React X foam on the bounce height test, got an average of 28.5 centimeters of bounce height in 
heel, and then 33 centimeters of bounce height in the forefoot, which really wasn't all that much different than just regular React foam I've seen in a lot of basketball shoes that Nike has come out with recently. However, in those shoes, they are a little bit more tightly tuned. There are shanks in them, so you know the, the energy isn't being dispersed throughout this entire bed of React foam. Whereas with this one, there's really nothing to turn all that potential energy into kinetic. Uh, when that ball bearing hits, the energy is dispersed throughout that React foam and React X, I should say. And what I've noticed in React foam is that React foam to me is more of a shock absorbing foam. One of the best shock absorbing foams out there, but um, to me, Nike seems like they're always marketing it in terms of energy return. I mean, React actually doesn't seem any different. And getting into the outsole tread of the Infinity Run 4, it is just pretty basic stamp pattern. There is micro gridding here on each one of these stamps, which is nice. And then it is cut out to save weight. So you're getting React X foam right on the ground here as well. It looks like there is a little bit of a coating on that though. You do have a, a pretty big pad here. It is gonna give a little bit of a better dirt durability profile up here because remember anytime you enter push off it doesn't matter if you're a heel midfoot or forefoot striker anytime you get into the last phase of your stance right push off you do get a little bit of a shimmy there the best runners in the world can eliminate that uh, as much as possible but there's always just a little bit of, of a shimmy there and that's that's why they put that pad there now if you do notice it does look like nike grind within the material of the outsole as you can see those little speckles there that is the recycled components of the rubber there and if you look at it on the outsole durability test 10 seconds high grit sandpaper i mean the bird does not make a millimeter of damage on this now number one these are wide pods of tread so you are sharing the load of that friction that heat is being dispersed However, like I said, once we get into the runability section, kind of see why um, the durability on the outsole of these, I really don't think is gonna be a huge problem as long as you're the right runner for them. And speaking of running, if you look at the speed ratio of the Infinity Run 4, comes in at a 2.43, which I think says all you need to know about them. These are not super fast shoes. The weight of these, which is a little bit higher, lends themselves to more of that daily trainer type shoe. It's just that there's no shank in them. So like I said, gotta be the right person for these, but I, these are not speed demons by any stretch of the imagination. However, if you're the right runner, they are pretty darn comfortable. And getting into the fit of the fours, because the uppers are so elastic, they will break in pretty well. If you are a narrow or medium foot, just go true to size. Even a 2E, I really had no problems in my standard size in these. However, if you do want a little bit more of a roomy fit, you can go up a half size. Just make sure you use the runner's knot or make your own. Um, the one thing I will say is a high arch foot is, is not going to be very comfortable on these if you're going to use the runner's knot. If you don't have to use a runner's knot on them, if you don't care, it's going to be a little bit better, but um, it, you better probably be a neutral to more flat arch in these to, to be more comfortable because if you do have like a little dome here on the top of your uh, midfoot or even the rear foot or you know anywhere where you have a little hump up there that a lot of high arch people do, it is going to run into those laces and that's where you're going to start to get that irritation. Like I said, it did get a little bit better as I ran in them more and more, but it was never buttery, never super comfortable. Uh, but like I said, that is foot type dependent. But in terms of any other snake bites you might have on your foot, in terms of heel pain, like I said, React Foam, super shock absorptive. They're gonna be really nice for that. Once the React Foam starts to wear down, which they shouldn't for a while, because like I said, Nike made this to last. So you should get some more durability out of the React X. However, once it does start to bottom, it, they are gonna start to lose some of their best properties, like for arch pain, uh, things like that. In terms of with ball of foot pain, I think if you're a midfoot striker, they're okay, but anything up on the forefoot striking, I'm not so sure they're that great for just because of the geometry of the midsole. Um, in terms of an orthotic, you can fit a really low profile orthotic in there, but remember, fit a bulkier orthotic in there, you're gonna start to raise up in the shoe and those laces are gonna start to annoy you. So if it were me, I probably would be thinking no orthotic in these, or like I said, razor thin orthotic. And speaking of all those bumps and bruises you could get on your foot, if you are someone that just has not been able to get a good solid answer on what is going on with your foot if you are having these nagging injuries and you just haven't been able to find someone that lives and breathes, you know, this community like you and I do. I know I say that in a lot of videos, uh, but it's true. Uh, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting in the description below. So if you wanna check that out and you wanna talk through an issue you're having, I have links in the description below. But getting into the most important part of the Nike React X Infinity Run 4, that is a mouthful, uh, is their runnability the best runners for these, the best strike patterns for these, because they do not fit every strike pattern that well. I, I will say, 
they are a phenomenal shoe for a midfoot striker to slightly distal midfoot striker. I think that's the best ergonomics for these. Uh, and I was doing this in the, in the members uh, early cut video is I was showing them kind of how this shoe transitioned. If you are a heel striker, because the tread profile and just the midsole profile and the shape is so flat from the middle part of the rear foot into the midfoot, they just kind of slap on the ground, right? You just, there's not much transition there for a heel striker. So although you can, you are gonna start to kink the React foam under there because there is no shank. Now, if there were a shank in these, I would say that actually give you maybe a little bit of a boost from a rear foot striker or a heel striker. But since there's no shank, you're just kind of caving in the midsole. So um, they were okay at first, but in, over time, I could just start to notice that just, just weren't as responsive. However, when I was midfoot striking, like true midfoot striking, slightly distal midfoot striking, that's when these really started to come alive. Started to notice all the shock absorptive capabilities of the React foam. They were really comfortable. I had a nice little kick, right? You know, just it really, they were really starting to give me something back. Plus, when you strike midfoot on these, that's where you get the most redistribution of energy, right? Because that's the meat of the React foam or the React X foam, I keep messing that up. But that's where you start to get that energy kind of being dispersed throughout the shoe and it's kind of able to disperse it in, in, the, in the most efficient way possible. For a forefoot striker, just with the way the geometry of the forefoot is in the foam, I, I kind of found that I was either leaning too far forward or like my foot was sliding down a slope. These just don't have like the geometry for me for a four foot striker. Now, if you're, like I said, distal midfoot in there, I think they're okay. But if you're someone that really prides themselves on their four foot striking, you're gonna notice there's just really not a lot to support you right there. And it's not that it's the stack of foam. It's like I said, it's the shape and geometry of it. I'd say if you're somebody kind of lightweight to middleweight, I think you're gonna have really good longevity of these. If you're a very heavy runner, they might feel pretty good for a while, but without a shank, they just might not be the best. So I just think you gotta be the right runner for these and you're gonna have a good time with them. But if you're not, you're gonna be kind of wishing you had something else. So I would love to hear your thoughts uh, down below. This was a super interesting shoe for me to look at in the running space because it's a little bit different than some of the other Nike offerings I have seen recently this year. So let me know in the comments down below what you thought of them. And if you wanna see the other big sibling to the Infinity Run 4, the Invincible Run go under the knife, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam, and I'll see you somewhere in the sneakerverse.